Good morning. And welcome to St. Mark's United Church of Christ here in New Albany, Indiana. We are delighted to have you with us, whether in person or there at home at Facebook Live. Before we begin our time of worship, we do have some announcements that we'd like to cover, so please draw your attention to our bulletin. The flowers on the altar are sponsored in loving memory of Betty Elmers by her husband, Skim Elmers, and family. The association meeting of the Kentuckiana Association is this afternoon at 3 o'clock. All, all are invited. Uh, it is being held at Bethany United Church of Christ over in Louisville. Pastor John and I will be attending. Woohoo! And I will be bringing my snow cones, so you most certainly do not want to miss that um, uh, as we gather for fellowship and, and time together this afternoon. Um, our CPR training has been canceled and has been rescheduled for June the 18th. So if you're interested in signing up for training, you still have an opportunity to do so. I've been asked by one of our Boy Scouts, Mr. Carter Wright, to share that he is selling camp cards for um, Boy Scout camp. If you're interested in getting one of those, you can see him after church. They are $10. Also, please note that it is our month again uh, at Hope of Southern Indiana to fill their pantry. You may bring your items to the Education Building Monday through Thursday from 8.30 to 4, or you may leave them here in the sanctuary on Sundays over in the back area to the left of the wall. Camp Miram will be here within a, what, four weeks? We're almost four weeks away from Camp Miram. Um, so we do have some campers that are going. Because of the pandemic, we were not able to have our typical fundraising as we've done in the past. Um, the camp this year is 400 a, a camper. So if there are any that are interested in sponsoring a camper, please get with me at any time and I can get you connected uh, so that w our children can be able to attend camp with no issues. I do not believe there are any other announcements oh, other than the fact that the semester is over for me. And <laughs> so thank you. I made it through the rest of a pandemic in shingles, so praise be to God. Um, and I will now turn it over to Pastor John. Speaking of semesters being over, I invite Donna Robinson to come up for our scholarship presentation. St. Mark's has two scholarships that we can give based on uh, uh, wills and bequests that we've received. Each of them is an application process. Any member in good standing who is pursuing undergraduate or graduate education may apply. We had two applicants for the Kitterman Scholarship this year and we're delighted to present two scholarships. Um, Cameron, our two applicants were Cameron Scheidau and Carolyn Essex. Cameron was able to be with us today. We had planned this for the, the Youth Recognition Sunday, which Cameron couldn't attend, and Carolyn uh, couldn't attend today, so we were doing this in two different pieces. The uh, applications, uh, the uh, characteristics for uh, the scholarship were to demonstrate leadership, which Cameron has certainly done at her time here, and so we at St. Mark's are pleased to present her with the Kitterman Scholarship. The second scholarship is from the will of Eva Grove and pretty much the same characteristics demonstrating leadership and so on, but with the one uh, difference that the person needs to be pursuing a religious related profession, we have one person who seems to be eligible and he did apply. And so we're pleased to give the, Kiva, the Eva Grown Grow Scholarship to Ken Rose. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> All of this is advantageous on this day as I introduce the preacher that will be with us shortly. Uh, Dr. Mary Sch uh, Schaller Blaufus is the Vice President of Institutional Advancement at Eden Seminary. And uh, seminary is one of those areas I talked a little bit about in the Wednesday 
uh, letter that went out. Uh, seminary is one of those things that's kind of mysterious to a lot of people, but it is such a vital and important part of the work of the church, uh, especially in the United Church of Christ, that the churches believe in an educated clergy. And so it is part of the, the calling of our, of our denomination that folks, uh, by and large, have a master's degree that is nearly 90 hours. And so it is a grueling three-year process uh, to get to the point for most of us. Just ask Ken. <laughs> grueling four-year process to get to, to the point where you've achieved a master of divinity, which I assure you on the other side of that, you don't feel like you've mastered divinity at all. Uh, but Dr. Blaufus is here because we are anxious to reestablish our connection with Eden Seminary, which is long and deep here at St. Mark's. And so we are hoping that this is the, the beginning of uh, many visits and that we can, uh, again, make a regular part of our uh, giving and of our memory. It is, in fact, our school and one that we support. So I want to welcome Mary here today, and you'll have the chance to greet her as we leave this morning. So let us gather our hearts and ourselves together in worship today. Good morning, and I wanted to say it's, it's really something when to welcome you to St. Mark because when I was driving down the street when we first moved to town and Bill and I had checked out all the Baptist churches because we were Baptists, we couldn't find them. So anyway, we were, wa we were walking down the street one day and we saw the sign that says, no matter who you are or where you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here at St. Mark's. And I thought, well, what a wonderful thing to say. And so we decided, well, we're going to come in and go see what it's really like. Are we all welcome? So we are all welcome, and that's, I know you are too. Uh, the, I have one announcement to make, and that's the flowers on the altar today. Beautiful daisies are giving in the, lo giving in the loving memory of Betty Elmers by her husband, Skip Elmers, and family. <clears throat> If you will read with me, we'll start our call to worship. The world is charged with the grandeur of God. Praise, Praise God. God. The universe is a community of subjects, not a collection of objects. Praise All creation is a song of praise of God. The earth is a sparkling blue and white jewel laced with slowly swirling veils of white like a pearl in a thick sea of black mystery. Great Spirit, give me the strength to walk the soft earth a relative to all that is. Great Spirit, give me the strength to walk the soft earth, a relative to all that is. Those who contemplate the beauty of the earth find reserves of strength that will endure as long as life lasts. All peace, God. Our reading this morning is, oh, excuse me, I'm out of line. <laughs> I knew they wanted me to get down from here. <laughs>
Let us now go to God in prayer for our morning invocation. Gracious God, yours is the gift of creation, the rebirth of spring. Yours is the grace that makes all things new. Yours is the word that speaks a spring of water to slate our thirst. Yours is the urgency that challenges us to care for your creation. Open our minds to the mind of Christ. Open our lips and we will sing hallelujah with the sun and the moon, with the mountain and the hill, with all creatures of land and sea. Together, we will sing awe to your splendor. Amen. And let us now rise in body or in spirit as we do sing hallelujah with our first hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King, hymn number 22. Oops. you may be seated. Let us find this morning our prayer of confession. Let us pray. 
Creator God, we have neglected our neighbors in their times of need. We have enjoyed profits and pleasures that harm your land and pollute your waters. We have squandered much of what you have made and called good. Have mercy on us. Help us change our ways and make us new, that all may know the joy of abundant life. Amen. Friends, hear now this assurance of pardon. From birth to rebirth, God writes new beginnings. God offers grace upon grace. In Jesus Christ, God shows and tells an endless love that inspires green shoots of new life. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Friends, again, mindful of this time of pandemic, let us carefully but joyfully share the beautiful passing of the peace. Peace be with you. At this time, I would like to invite any little ones that we have in the sanctuary with us if they want to join me at the steps. For those of you at home, to gather around your devices as we gather for time with children. And for always, those of us that are young at heart, to be attuned to the message as well. Do I have anyone? No one? Earl, you want to join me? <laughs> Good morning. So, I have in my bag of wonder, I'm three items that you have seen before in this bag, but they have a connection. Let's see. I have a heart. What do we think about when we see a heart? I think of love, don't you? Love, Valentine's Day, loving with all our heart. Okay. Now this next item you have seen, but you may not remember it, but there are a few in the sanctuary this morning or at home that definitely know what this is. Those of us that have been in the Navy or the Coast Guard know this as our Blue Jackets manual. And this big, thick book is given to every sailor when we go into boot camp. And it is like our Bible. It tells us what to do and what not to do. It has commandments for us and tells us how to be sailors. There's that one. And then finally, I have this book. Any idea what this might be? Huh? the Holy Bible, right? It's our Bible. In this book, we hear about God and Jesus and God's love for us and how we are to care and love for one another. There's commandments in this book as well as my Navy book. But this book has a commandment that I love more than any, and we hear it this morning in our gospel lesson when Jesus tells us of a new commandment, and that is to love one another. So remember, no matter where you are and where you may be doing or going, always love everyone in your heart. Can we do that this morning? Let's pray. 
God, we thank you for the commandment to love one another and to love you. Be with us now, we pray in your name. Amen. So little ones and those of you not so little, be good and do good and know that you are loved. The message that we will receive this morning from the pastor is found in John 13, 31 through 35, and it's considered a new commandment. When he had left, Jesus said, now the son of man is seen for who he is and God seen for who he is in him. The moment God is seen in him, God's glory will be on display. In glorifying him, he himself is glorified. Glory all around. Children, I'm not with you for only a short time longer. You're going to look high and low for me, but as I told the Jews, I'm telling you, where I go, you are not able to come. Let me give you a new commandment. Love one another. In the same way I loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples. Then when they see the love you have for each other. Bless the reading of the word. Hear these words also from the New Testament in Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what they sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite from Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. 
and he sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Will you pray with me? God, we give you thanks for these words. May they be your words in and among us throughout this sanctuary and into the world. Amen. Well, it is an absolute joy to be with you in worship today. I um, am so pleased to be able to be uh, going around the country and uh, connecting with congregations uh, around Eden Seminary, and it is especially good to be with you here uh, in New Albany. Uh, there are long connections and uh, history with the formation of leaders and the, the congregational resources uh, with Eden Seminary and this congregation. So it is a pleasure. I have to say that uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking about uh, two years ago this time, March of 2020. I suppose that that date will be etched in the consciousness of our generations, much like the dates of uh, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, or maybe the dates of when the towers of the World Trade Center had planes fly into them on 9-11-2001. I suppose that most of us will remember where we were. I have to say, at Eden, uh, in March of 2020, when the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus a global pandemic, we had just started our reading week. And that reading week is that time in the semester that is set aside uh, where there are no classes held, and so it's a space where students are able to catch up on reading or start their writing of their final papers. Ken is... Uh, uh, He's nodding, he knows that that space is important. Uh, most of our students these days have full-time jobs in addition to being full-time students and family responsibilities for it's a sense to get a breather. Well, this breather um, was the time when the global pandemic was declared and so uh, at Eden we made the decision that we would shutter the physical building to keep people safe. And within a week, uh, faculty had retooled their classes so that at the end of that week that students could come back into class via Zoom. Uh, we'd already been doing this through our DMEN program. So Pastor John, you knew what this was about already, but the master's degree students weren't quite so on top of things at that moment. So we finished that semester via Zoom, and it became clear that there were digital natives among us, those who were really comfortable with that, and there were those who hadn't signed up for this. And what we found was that the students like clustered around each other and were helping each other to make their way through this. And so we had a successful graduation that spring. And we had another year of uh, having our classes online. And it became clear that there were all kinds of changes that were needed. Before I returned to Eden Seminary, I'm a graduate um, of about three decades ago, I was serving on your behalf uh, in the national setting of the United Church of Christ, uh, administrating the One Great Hour of Sharing offering ministries. And among those ministries that you make possible through your One Great Hour of Sharing offerings are disaster ministries. And so I knew from my time in working with natural disasters that in the time of crisis that you have to address the immediate crisis, the immediate disaster, but really the most impactful time the longest time, the most expensive time, is the long-term recovery. And that's where the church shines. Because the church, rooted in God's steadfast love that endures forever, gets to accompany people in that long-term rebuilding and sustaining. We realized that in this time of pandemic, here we are. 
in the midst of that long term. At Eden, we started retooling not only how we met together, but also what kinds of resources could the seminary uh, provide and uh, be part of people participating in the life of the seminary. And so even in the spring of 2020, the faculty each uh, did what we called an e-forum. And based on their particular uh, academic disciplines, reflected on uh, the pandemic and where we were in light of New Testament, in preaching, in pastoral care, and offered that as a resource via Facebook Live, <laughs> via all kinds of recordings. And to our amazement, people joined in. And alumni came, and students came, and congregation members came, and it felt like the community was gathered. In my role um, in advancement, fundraising is part of my work, and so I uh, write letters to people on a regular basis. And that spring, all I could think of to write was thank you for the encouragement. The encouragement of showing up. The encouragement of being present in whatever ways was possible, in ways that was towards the good of the whole and the good of the community. The encouragement that we were able to be a community of learning and faith, that we were be able to be part of the life of the church for such a time as this. Well, in those uh, intervening years, we have learned a lot. <laughs> I was sharing with one of the adult classes this morning uh, the ways that uh, since the fall of 2021, in this academic year, that we're coming upon a conclusion of, that all of the classes, all of the chapel, all of the community events, all of the contextual ed seminars have been happening in a blended format, meaning everyone is able to join either digitally or residentially in person at the same time. And students have been able to join in high flex modes, meaning that class period to class period, a student could change whether they were going to be in the building or present online. And as we speak, we are changing yet again because in the coming summer and in the coming academic year, we will not only be able to have those classes that meet at the same time in the same space, but we will also be able to have places that are asynchronous, classes where people will be gathering and interacting with each other, just not at the same time. Eden is now accredited to offer all of our degrees online and residentially, and so it's giving us this global national footprint. And in all of that, the values that we hold dear, the values of community, the values of uh, formation, the values of encouragement have been kept in the forefront. Eden now offers a clinical pastoral education program online. Contextual education, our field education, is happening wherever our students are located. And our students are located in Texas and Oregon and Massachusetts and Missouri and Indiana. In fact, we're playing around with the hashtag, um, we are Eden wherever we are. There are opportunities for people to join in, not only students and degree programs, but certificates and congregational enrichment, uh, pre-retirement seminars we call next steps. So if anyone is in early retirement, in uh, uh, upcoming retirement, you might consider being part of the next steps cohort. What is your vision for your vocation, for your ministry? as you go forward. People have been joining in with our life classes, which are certificate classes in uh, New Testament and Old Testament and cross-cultural immersion and uh, 
joining with others who are getting an introduction or just a snippet of some of those academic uh, fields. And then our lectures and our convocations have been able to have people from around the world join in. We had spring convocation just a few weeks ago. And not only did we have participants who were located in all kinds of different places, the leaders of those panels were in Manila, the Philippines, and were in Chicago, as well as in St. Louis. It has been a beautiful, multiplying time. Leaning into the strengths of friendships among very different people blossoming. Leaning into the strengths of leaders formed with capacities for practicing anti-racism and other intersecting oppressions with interfaith and ecumenical collegiality and vocational resilience and with the community of scholars, past and present, engaged. We are leaning into those strengths of the seminary. Theological imagination, spiritual and vocational formation, and social transformation. And through all of this, through all of this, it has been the encouragement of the wider community that has helped this to multiply and to blossom. And so today, or tomorrow, when I get back to my desk and I get to write more letters, it's that thank you for your support and encouragement that continues to be the message. And I get that from being part of this worshiping congregation and being part of uh, the ministries that you are engaged in each and every day, I get that from some of the story that we heard here from Acts chapter 4. In Acts chapter 4, in these uh, verses 32 through 37, we have the church, the early church, trying to figure out what it is to be church together and what it is to be church when Jesus has been crucified, has risen, has appeared to them, and they are in this post-resurrection space. And it's a post-resurrection space that is not necessarily comfortable. The pandemic is not over. And they're in a post-resurrection space, yet in which they know that life and new life is real because they've experienced that life and new life in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The world has changed and they know they're part of it. They just don't know exactly how. There are so many decisions to be made. They have to come to terms with their own personal experiences. They have to figure out how they're gonna make decisions together. What's the community going to look like? And what does it mean to show up for the resurrected Jesus. I do believe that in this space and in this time, we are asking each other, what does community look like? What does church look like? Who are we living in this post-resurrection world? And the clues we get from Acts chapter 4 and joining in with that community of disciples is a passage that highlights a path. Not the path, not a blueprint, not a legal document, but a path for making decisions and it's decisions with a purpose. And that purpose for the writer of Acts is to testify to the resurrection of Jesus Christ and with the grace that is upon us all. It's a passage where people don't necessarily agree with each other. If you reread that passage uh, when you go home, it's not that they're of one mind. <laughs> it's they're of one heart and soul. 
And Paul's subsequent letters to the community would bear this out, that he's always dealing with conflict. He's always in the midst of conflict management. But in Acts, their hearts and their souls are in common. They are bound up together in love and purpose. And everything they owned was held in common. For the writer of Acts, that common purpose is testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and the great grace that was upon them all. And here in this passage, it points to the resources that have been entrusted to us, to them, for the common good. And to that calling, everyone is to find their strengths, their gifts, their resources, and bring it for the common good. Homeowners and landowners in Acts sell their property and bring those proceeds to the community. Preachers and activists and leaders use those skills for the common good. Congregations and organizations look at themselves. Congregations find their strengths and their resources and align those strengths with the gifts which may be different of other congregations and other people and other leaders, but together towards the common good. Now the writer of Acts could have stopped right there. This is nice, kind of general, the apostles, no one's named. But in order to accent how important this is, the writer of Acts gives us a personal story and uses a lot of detail to let us know that Joseph, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, I mean, we're really getting to know who this guy is, that Joseph, the Levite, the native of Cyprus, was one of those who sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet in service to the common good. And the apostles were so influenced by his actions that they gave him a new name, Barnabas, which means son of encouragement son of encouragement. There are encouragers among us and we have personal stories that we could go into great detail because they are our friends and our neighbors and those among us who are encouragers. And at this point, I just want to lift up uh, a couple in our midst, um, and that is Pat and Earl Miller, who are among those encouragers of us, who along with um, uh, family members and uh, the network and uh, those of you in this congregation that are uh, part of this network are, have started a new scholarship at Eden Seminary uh, in their name. And it, it is a scholarship that will help recruit and to form and to help make financially possible a student who identifies as queer, gay, lesbian, trans, in order to know that the leadership of the church is theirs and that you are among us. It is a great encouragement for those who will receive that scholarship and for those who receive other scholarships and for others who become part of that community because remember we're all different and we learn from each other and we align with each other in acts towards that common good. One of my mentors when I was just beginning ministry was a pastor by the name of David Ray and uh, I recommend his books to you. He does a lot of writing on the small church. And I was serving as a pastor in a small membership church at the time and trying, just trying to figure out what it is to be a pastor. And he advised me. He said, love them, be their cheerleader, and let them love you 
back. And that's the way you're going to find impactful ministry together. Now, I have to say, when David first said this to me, I kind of bristled because um, the cheerleader uh, brought back these connotations of when I was in ninth grade and tried out for to be a basketball cheerleader, and I hadn't warmed up enough, I guess, for the uh, cheerleading tryouts, and I tried to do a split, and I can still feel the tendon in my leg splitting. <laughs> Vowed I would never do that again. And yet here, as I was starting ministry, my mentor was tasking me to be a cheerleader, to be an encourager. And I have to say, I've never forgotten. As an encourager, we show up with our whole selves. For Joseph, named Barnabas, he showed up with his whole self, with everything he was and with everything he had. For him, it meant selling a field and bringing the money and bringing it to the service for the common good. An encourager gets up off the sidelines and models the actions of that testimony of new life. You know, maybe that was another reason the cheerleader didn't work for me because the action seemed to be happening in the middle of the field and that's where I wanted to be. But an encourager is not a fringe calling but the very heart and soul of actions towards the common goal. That common goal is testimony to the resurrection, the new life of Jesus in our midst. Decisions need to be made, and it's going to take a community to make them. And it's going to take theological imagination. And it's going to take spiritual and vocational resilience. And it's going to take social transformation. And it's going to take allowing ourselves to accept the grace that is Jesus' new life among us. So let us bring our whole selves let us bring our own strengths and our networks and our resources and put them at the service of the common good. Not all trying to be the same, but put those resources at the service of each other. Because then too, perhaps we can claim that name of Barnabas, child of encouragement as we too lay our whole selves and our resources and our dreams and our energy at the apostles' feet so that we too can give testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and to accept the great grace that was upon us all. Amen.
Friends, as we come together in a time of prayer, I want to lift up an experience I had yesterday. I don't often pray from Facebook or things that I see, but yesterday the uh, students of Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary held their graduation, and I have a, a good many friends, uh, as Ken knows, still there. Um, and I was struck by the, the number of happy faces uh, as they were concluding degrees, and in my case, the, the Facebook feed yesterday was filled with uh, African-American families that I have been friends with for a number of years that were celebrating graduations. And so there was a lot of good feeling and a lot of celebration around those achievements. At the same time, yesterday, uh, we're all too aware of the shooting in Buffalo of which a young man traveled for hours to simply seek out an African-American community. And so we have both of these things competing for our interest and our eyes. The very sight of a family celebrating, and celebrating because of things that they have overcome because of the color of their skin, and we are mourning things that people are forced to face because of the color of their skin. And so as we come before God today, we do not come with answers, but as always, we come with more questions. But I invite us in this moment to hold both in our hands. Let us gather ourselves in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, we come before you today not knowing we come before you today with questions, with concerns, with fears. We don't understand this world. We don't understand evil. Sometimes we don't even understand our own feelings. Dear God, we pray that you are with us. We pray that you are with those who suffer as we are sure you are with those who celebrate. We pray that you are with us when we are fearful of what may happen in the next moment. Lord, hear our prayers when we do not understand what is happening around us, where our world might go. There is war, there is conflict, there is division, there is hatred. We do not follow Jesus' commandment to love one another unequivocally. Too often we find things that make us different, ways to separate ourselves one from another. So dear God, hear our prayers this day. Prayers for ourselves, prayers for the people that we love, prayers for our church and our community, our country and our world. Hear all of these prayers we lift to you now, these things known only to you and to us. Lord, there's never enough time, but we trust you have heard these prayers. Hear us as we together pray in one voice the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It has been said that gratitude follows grace, like thunder following lightning. In response to God's gifts of unconditional love and ongoing creation, we offer now our hearts, minds, soul, and strength 
to the one from whom all blessings flow. Let us pray together. Gracious God, you offer us abundant life. You offer you thanks and praise. You soul in us the gift of giving. We dedicate these first fruits to you. Your goodness abounds. Your provision is sure. To you we offer these gifts of gratitude. To you we rededicate our loves and lives. Amen. Let us rise in body or in spirit of our singing of the doxology. Friends, let us join in our commission. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Please remain standing as we sing our closing hymn, Here I Am, Lord, hymn number 452.
friends of Christ. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God grant us all peace now and forevermore. Amen.